Yo guys. This is the part 1 of what if Naruto had a poison bloodline. What if Uzumaki Naruto wasn't such a hyperactive child? What if he focused his energy into studying a type of jutsu rarely used in the shinobi world? What if he had a Keke Jenke that made said jutsu stronger than ever? Before we start be sure to check the description and big thanks to Kairamaru. Don't forget to subscribe. So let's start the part 1. Chapter 1 Awakening Master, Toxic Revival Uzumaki Naruto A young blonde-haired, blue-eyed boy of 6 years old was walking to his first day of school at the Konoha Ninja Academy. Naruto was wearing his new ninja outfit given to him by his Gigi, also known as the Sandame Hokage, here is in Serutobi. His, awesome ninja clothes as he called them consisted of a short-sleeved mesh undershirt, a dark burnt orange long-sleeved overshirt, black ninja pants with a kanai holster strapped to his right thigh, and dark blue ninja sandals. Along with several of the same outfit Hiruzen had also given Naruto a belt that had several small storage pouches sewn into it to carry various ninja tools and supplies. As Naruto ran around him Hiruzen couldn't help but smile fondly at the child's antics. And then I'm gonna be the best in taijutsu, and ninjutsu, and weapons, and all the other awesome ninja things Gigi. Naruto exclaimed as he ran a few feet ahead of the Hokage. I'm sure you will be Naruto, I'm sure you will be. Hiruzen chuckled as the boy had been proclaiming such things since he'd picked him up from his apartment that morning. Now you may be wondering why such a young child was living on his own at the tender age of six. You see on the night Naruto was born the Kayubi no Yuko, the greatest of the Biju, suddenly attacked Kanahagakur without warning. It appeared so suddenly that no proper defense could be raised and no ways to defeat it could be found. As the ninja of Konoha raced to defend their home against the beast the Yandaimi Hokage, Namikaze Minato, was welcoming his newborn son into the world. Sadly for the proud father his wife, Uzumaki Namikaze Kashina, hadn't been able to survive the birthing of her son with the malicious chakra and unending intent of the Kayubi pressing down on all of Konoha. With no other alternative left the Yandaimi resorted to his only solution. He sealed the beast into his own son at the cost of his life. Mere hours after he had been born Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto had been left alone in this world. The Yandaim's final wish was for the whole of Kanahagakur to view his son as the hero that kept them safe from the beast. However, human emotions often get the better of people and this case was no exception. Once the newly reinstated Sandame Hokage had revealed Naruto's status as the beast's living prison the villagers, with their losses and undirected anger, chose baby Naruto as the target of their rage. So great was the villagers' outcry that the Sandame ped a law stating that any person who spoke of Naruto's burden to anyone who did not already know would be executed for treason against Konoha. So it came to be that Naruto, the only child of the Yandaimi Hokage, was raised alone and secluded by Sarutobi's most trusted maternal caregivers. The boy grew up being cared for by both retired and active Kunoichi and Shinobi. So it came as no small surprise to Hiruzen that the boy had wanted to join the village's military Shinobi force. So the Hokage had enrolled the boy, despite some protests from the civilian representatives on the council and a small number of his own Shinobi force, into the academy when Naruto had reached the age of six. As they both walked towards the academy the Hokage took notice of the glares of the villagers directed towards Naruto. It's been six years now, even though the villagers have calmed themselves and tried to move past that horrible night many still can't see the boy as more than the Kayubi. Hiruzen thought sadly as he looked upon the happy smiling form of his surrogate grandson. Hey, hey, Gigi we're here. We're here, came Naruto's joyous exclamation. The Hokage looked up from his musings and smiled at the young blonde. Indeed we are Naruto. The Sandame replied with a grin. As the Hokage escorted Naruto to his CL he noted the looks the boy was receiving from both parents and the teachers. M, he mused, it looks like most of the teachers understand the boy's situation. Sadly the parents don't seem to want their children to interact with the boy. Naruto, as happy as he was, wasn't oblivious to the glares and cold looks he was receiving from the villagers. It's always the same. He thought, they all look at me like I did something wrong to them. 
Naruto's thoughts were cut short when the Hokage ushered him into a seal room. Upon entering the blonde saw various children his age sitting in several rows of seats. He noticed that several were from what his Gigi called Kanaha's ninja clans, while most were civilian children who wanted to try their hand at being in the shinobi forces. Now, Naruto, said the Hokage, I want you to study hard and listen to your sensei, alright? Naruto vigorously nodded his head while replying. Sure thing Gigi. I'll learn everything sensei teaches me and I'll be the best ninja ever. With a smile on his face and after playfully tussling the blonde's hair the Hokage left Naruto to find a seat as the sensei began to quiet the CL down in preparation for roll call. After finishing the roll call the sensei introduced himself. Oh students, my name is Aruka and this is my istant Mizuki. Said Aruka as he pointed to Mizuki. We will be your sensei for the duration of your time here at the academy. Naruto instantly took to Uruka's kind tone and calm composure. However, he felt something was a bit off with Mizuki. Something just didn't seem right about the man. Especially when he saw Mizuki glare at him with those cold eyes he saw the villagers give him. Note to self, thought Naruto, watch out for Mizuki sensei, something isn't right about him. Time skip end of the first semester At the end of the first semester the first year student rankings were posted in the lobby of the academy for all to see. To Naruto's great joy he was ranked a bit above the middle of the CL. Yes. Naruto exclaimed in his mind, all that extra studying is paying off. Wait, till I tell Gigi about this. With that thought in his mind Naruto took off toward the Hokage Tower in the center of the village. As he arrived he saw the Anbu guarding the doors, the two Anbu gave him a respectful bow as one opened the door for him. To this day Naruto still couldn't figure out why his Gigi's, masked ninja, as Naruto called them, were so kind and courteous to him but he thanked them both anyway as he made his way into the tower. Upon arriving at the Hokage's office door Naruto asked the secretary if he could see the old man. After the secretary checked with the Hokage through the intercom and telling him it was okay Naruto rushed into the office, but not before the secretary told him how cute she thought he was and her giving him a few sweets to have later. Hey Gigi. Naruto yelled as he jumped in front of the Hokage's desk, you'll never guess where I was ranked on the first year students list. Naruto was practically bouncing where he stood from excitement. Oh and where was that Naruto? The Hokage asked kindly even though he had received said rankings the day before. I'm in the top of the middle tier of students. Naruto shouted as he grinned broadly. My, my, Naruto. Said the Hokage fondly, that's quite an achievement. Naruto, if possible, smiled even brighter at the praise. Just you wait Gigi. Naruto laughed, soon enough I'll be at the top of the whole school and then I'll be a ninja just like you. Sarutobi chuckled at his surrogate grandson's energetic proclamation. I have no doubt that you will be someday Naruto. But how about we celebrate with some ramen now? He asked the young blonde who nodded happily as he led the Hokage out of his office and towards Ichiraku ramen. Time skip end of the first year, Uzumaki, 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 Naruto repeated to himself as his eyes scrolled down the first year student's final ranking list on the bulletin board. Aha, here it is, he exclaimed as he found his name. Awesome, I'm in the middle of the upper tier, he thought proudly as he saw his name directly below someone named Abarame Shino. Naruto made his way to Ichiraku with a grin on his face for his accomplishment. After gorging himself with as much ramen as he could eat he went home to his apartment to get some rest. On his way home he began to think about what Aruka had told them of the various fields of the ninja force. Uruka had explained that each field usually had an expertise in a given art of the ninja profession and that they should all begin thinking about what kind of ninja they wanted to be when they graduated. Well obviously I want to be the best ninja ever. Thought Naruto as he recalled that particular lecture. In his now seven year old mind that was all there was to being a ninja. Though I have to admit what the textbooks say about poisons is really cool. Naruto mused, I mean come on, you could barely touch a bad guy with some of those poisons and he'd drop to the ground unconscious or worse in less than a minute. These kinds of thoughts spurred Naruto's imagination and filled his dreams that night with him using his, 
awesome ninja poisons to defeat bad guys and rescue princesses and daimyos. Time skipped the next day on Naruto's first day of summer break he immediately set off for the library in hopes of finding out more about his newly chosen weapon of choice, poisons. When he asked the chunin that watched over the shinobi part of the library about any books on the subject he got a strange look before the chunin pointed him to a small section that contained the information Naruto sought. After checking out a few of the books he immediately set off for home to begin learning all he could about the subject that had caught his fascination. Oh wow! Naruto exclaimed. He had just finished the first chapter of the first book and already he was completely awestruck by the power poisons could contain. I can't believe more ninja don't use poisons. Naruto said with a sigh, you can do so much with them from capture, to interrogation, to outright. Naruto was so enamored with the versatility of poisons that he resolved to learn all he could and by the end of summer break he would beg Gigi to teach him at least one of the, admittedly few, poison jutsu the book had mentioned. Time skip end of summer break after two months worth of intense studying Naruto had finished all of the library's books on poisons and had learned how to use the non-lethal ones the books gave instructions on creating. Naruto was rather surprised that his outside hobby for gardening could be used to grow various types of plants that when mixed correctly produced mild poisons that could cause anything from mild aches to near total paralysis. The hardest thing he had done was getting the Hokage to teach him one of the poison jutsu the books had listed. But after explaining to Naruto that the jutsu wasn't to be used unless supervised or as a last resort the Hokage had caved and taught Naruto the Dokugiri no jutsu, one. Naruto now used the belt pouches the Sandame had given him to carry various poisons and antidotes as well as a new weapon the books had stated did well with poisons, Sanban. Now Naruto was making his way to the first day of his second year at the academy. He noticed the glares the villagers still sent his way but ignored them. One day they'll respect me. Naruto thought. When I'm Hokage they'll show me the respect they show Gigi. After getting situated in his seat at the academy and after role had been called Aruka took them all outside with Mizuki following behind the students. All right CL, Aruka said in his, teacher voice. Since it's the first day back we would like to see what all the students have trained in and learned since we last saw you. Once most of the CL had shown Aruka and Mizuki what they had done over their summer break Naruto was called up to show what he had done over the summer. Actually Uruka sensei if you could, can you get everyone to step back a bit? Naruto asked. Uruka raised an eyebrow at Naruto's request but did as asked and had all the students move back. Perfect, now I can show everybody my new jutsu. Naruto thought happily. Alright everybody watch this. Naruto exclaimed before starting a few hand seals and inhaling deeply. Dokugiri no jutsu. Naruto half shouted as he exhaled a large cloud of thick purple mist at a group of training dummies. After the mist had cleared everyone saw the result of Naruto's jutsu. The training dummies that had stood there before were made of a light brown wood. After Naruto's jutsu however, all three of them were a light purple color where the poisonous mist had stuck to the surface of the dummies. Naruto, Uruka called stunned, do you realize that you just preformed a B-rank ninjutsu technique? He asked the now grinning blonde. Of course Uruka sensei. Naruto laughed, it was the only one I could get down over the summer. After getting over his shock Uruka told everyone to return to CL while he washed the poison on the dummies away so that they could be used again without poisoning anyone. On the way back to CL all of the students were talking about Naruto's new technique. A boy Naruto knew as Inazuka Kiba actually congratulated Naruto on knowing a bad jutsu, before they were all ushered into their seats. Meanwhile unbeknownst to Naruto a certain shy Hyuga girl in the back row was blushing and looking admirably at him as she poked her fingers together and mumbled out a, Naruto-kun, before turning her attention to Uruka who had just walked back into the CL room to start their lessons for the day. Time skip end of second year after Naruto's impressive display on the first day many of the students and teachers had started regarding the boy as a student with amazing potential. Uruka was incredibly proud that several of his students were being regarded as the best the academy had to offer. 
After dismissing the students for the last time this year Aruka pondered on how much they would all have improved come the beginning of next year. Naruto however was completely oblivious to this as he was going over various poisons and the processes used to create them in his head. The now 8-year-old boy was unknowingly becoming the most knowledgeable non-ninja poison user in all of Hai no Kuni. As it was though, Naruto had just gotten to his apartment and quickly went to his small garden in his spare room. Alright, now what do I need for Saraikusa 2 poison? Naruto asked himself as he checked his book for the ingredients while browsing through his small garden. Time skipped several weeks later Uzumaki Naruto was seen running in a full sprint towards the Hokage Tower on a normal enough summer afternoon. To anyone that knew the boy, which was a very small number of people, you could tell that he was both excited about something and incredibly confused. Upon reaching the tower the Anbu stopped the boy at the door to ask him what was wrong. Why are you in such a hurry Uzumaki-san? The Anbu on the right with the monkey mask asked. I've gotta show Gigi something. Naruto practically yelled as he continued bouncing in front of the two Anbu. What is it you need to show Hokage-sama, Uzumaki-san? Did something happen? Questioned the other Anbu this one with a bird mask. Yes. Naruto shouted, something did happen. Look at this, with that the boy focused his chakra into his hands and to both Anbu members surprise a dark purple and green colored mist like chakra began to seep from the boy's hands. Tori can you handle things here while I escort Uzumaki-san to Hokage-sama, the monkey masked Anbu asked his partner. I'll take care of it Saru. Get Uzumaki-san to Hokage-sama. The bird masked Anbu replied. After being led to the Hokage's office, and being let in, the monkey-masked Anbu returned to his post while Naruto showed his new discovery to his Gigi. Once Naruto had shown what he could do only one word escaped Sarutobi's mouth in shock, Dokushu, three, he breathed out. What? Naruto asked the Hokage in confusion. Naruto my boy, what you've done was thought to be impossible nowadays. The last user of the Dokushu bloodline died almost 50 years ago. The Hokage answered as he continued to stare at Naruto's chakra-covered hands. Hey, Gigi, does this mean I have a Keke Genke thing, like the ones Aruka sensei taught us about? Naruto questioned as he let the chakra in his hands disperse. Yes, Naruto, you do. Your Keke Genke was thought to be extinct for decades now. To see it come back after all these years is truly remarkable. The Hokage said as he stood up to get a scroll off one of the shelves in his office. After finding the one he was looking for the old Hokage returned to his desk and unrolled the scroll for Naruto to see. Now, Naruto, your bloodline limit is called Dokushu. It allows the one who carries it to not only become immune to poisons of all types, but to also turn their very chakra and even their own body into poison. Sarutobi explained as Naruto looked at the scroll that doented his newly discovered bloodline. You mean I can turn into a poison mist or a puddle of liquid poison? Naruto asked as he looked up in confusion. Not quite Naruto, you see a Dokushu user's body can constantly produce various poisons from the pores of their skin when they apply chakra to their body. Anyone who comes into physical contact with said user will be poisoned on contact. With training the Dokushu user can control what kind of poison their body releases at any given time in battle. The Hokage explained as he handed the scroll to Naruto. Inside that scroll is a list of the known Dokushu techniques, they are rightfully yours now as you are the only known carrier of the bloodline. The Hokage said as he looked at the boy's shocked face. Gigi, Naruto questioned, does this mean I can find out who my family was? The old Hokage sighed before speaking again. I'm afraid not, my boy. The last Dokushu user died in the first attack on Uzu no Kuni by Iwa and Kumo in the start of the Third Ninja War. That was almost 50 years ago now. All I can say is that you must be his descendant from either your mother or father. As Naruto left the tower and headed to his apartment for the night he had only a single thought running through his head. I will master my new bloodline, he thought. I'll make all of my ancestors proud that I'm carrying on their keke jenke, he mentally shouted as he headed off to bed. Time Skip Academy graduation Uzumaki Naruto was sitting in his usual seat in CL as he waited to take the genin exam. 
since the discovery of his bloodline he had worked even harder in the academy and had climbed all the way up into the top 10 students of his year. The teachers called him a gifted hard-working student and told other students to try and emulate his school behavior. Only a few students didn't look up to Naruto as an example of a good future shinobi. One such person was Uchiha Sasuke. After his brother Itachi had committed the genocide of the Uchiha clan, he had become antisocial and looked down on others as weak and as dead weight in his goal to become stronger and take revenge on his brother. This however didn't affect any of Sasuke's numerous fangirls from fawning all over him constantly. Two of the worst about it were Haruno Sakura and Yamanaka Ino. Naruto had long since realized that both had the potential to be good kunoichi if they'd stop hanging all over Sasuke and actually trained. But, it wasn't his problem. If they wanted to waste time begging Sasuke for dates let them, he wouldn't be surprised when they came back traumatized from a mission. Uzumaki Naruto. Uruka called out as he held the door to the testing room open. Well time to pee. Naruto mumbled as he made his way down the stairs. As he ped Sasuke he heard the boy whisper, try not to fail, Dobi. Naruto knew Sasuke felt threatened by Naruto's ranking in the CL being so close to his own and that Sasuke took every chance he could to belittle Naruto for it. Careful Uchiha, Naruto whispered back, it'd be a shame if had to send you to the hospital for MIV poison damage to your organs. With that said Naruto walked into the next room to begin his test while Sasuke brooded in his seat at Naruto's remark. Alright, Naruto, we'll need you to perform the Henj no Jutsu 4, the Kawarimi no Jutsu 5, and the Bunshin no Jutsu 6, in order to pee and graduate this year. Uruka said kindly as he got ready to mark Naruto's scores. No problem Uruka sensei. Replied Naruto as he quickly substituted himself with one of the empty chairs in the room. Very good Naruto. Uruka praised as he gave Naruto a ping grade on the jutsu. Shortly after Naruto transformed into the sandame much too said old man's enjoyment as he watched the boys test through his viewing orb. Perfect Naruto. Uruka remarked as he marked another ping grade on the boy's test. Naruto then did seven hand seals and shouted, Doku Bunshin no Jutsu. Seven, in a puff of white smoke there stood eleven Naruto's including the original. Very, very, good Naruto. I take it these are some of your bloodline clones, right? Uruka asked as he observed the movements of the clones. Got it in one sensei. Naruto replied as he dismissed his clones causing them to disperse into thick clouds of purple ninja smoke. Congratulations, Naruto you more than qualify to graduate. Uruka said as he tossed Naruto a black clothed headband with the standard metal plate with the Konoha insignia on it. Thank you very much, Uruka sensei. Naruto replied as he caught the headband and tied it securely to his forehead. Walking back into the room wearing his new headband Naruto smirked at Sasuke's brooding face before going back to his seat. Awesome Naruto, Kiba said as he slapped Naruto on the back. You ped. Naruto smiled back at Kiba before replying, was there any doubt? In the back sat Hayuga Hanada and as she stared at Naruto with a heavy blush on her face she thought, I'm so happy Naruto-kun ped. Meanwhile Naruto was looking forward to Uruka who had just re-entered the CL room. Congratulations to all of you who ped the exams. Uruka said as he looked at all the students. Now you will all need to report back here tomorrow for team placements. Uruka called out to the CL before dismissing them for the day. After the last student had left Uruka used Shunshin no Jutsu to get to the Hokage's office so he could deliver the list of students who ped to the Sandame so that the Hokage could group them into three-man teams. After leaving the academy for the day and heading home to check on his little garden of plants, Naruto was just staring out of his window thinking about whose team he could be placed on tomorrow. As long as I'm not with that arrogant Sasuke, I guess I could learn to work with just about anyone. Naruto mused as he continued staring out of his window. Suddenly Naruto noticed a suspicious figure jumping from roof to roof with a large scroll strapped to their back. Well, that doesn't seem normal. Naruto thought before grabbing his gear and trying to stealthily follow the figure. After several minutes the figure dropped down into a clearing in the woods. 
Naruto carefully looked on from behind a tree as the figure removes their mask revealing themselves as Mizuki. Now that I've got the forbidden scroll I can finally leave this village and gain my reward from Orochimaru Sama. He said as he readjusted the scroll on his back while preparing to leap back into the trees. So that is his plan, huh? Well, if he thinks he can get away with betraying the village and trying to steal Jutsu he has another thing coming. Naruto thought as he threw five Sanban coated with a numbing poison that would rob a limb of all movement within two minutes. Mizuki sensing the weapons coming rolled to the side avoiding four of the five Sanban. The last one however was embedded about an inch into his left arm just below the shoulder. It. Mizuki cursed as he pulled the Sanban out of his shoulder. Who the did that? Show yourself it. He yelled into the surrounding forest. Shinobi lesson one. Said a hidden voice in the trees. Never reveal your presence if you don't have to. Suddenly Mizuki had to dodge another salvo of Sanban. Mizuki quickly guessed where the weapons had come from and jumped into Naruto's hiding spot and knocked the boy out of the tree into the ground below. Well if it isn't the demon brat. He said with a sneer. Ow, that hurt. Naruto said as he looked up at Mizuki. Why are you calling me that anyway? Naruto asked as he prepared for Mizuki's next move. Oh, that's right, no one is allowed to tell you or they. Mizuki said as he looked down at the boy. Tell me what? Naruto asked as he wondered what Mizuki was talking about. That you're the Kyubi no Yuko. Mizuki yelled at him with his face twisted by rage. What the air you talking about? Naruto questioned as he listened to what the traitor had to say. The Yandaimi couldn't kill the Kyubi the night it attacked the village. So he did the next best thing, he sealed it away into a child. That child was you Naruto. You are the Kyubi reborn. Mizuki yelled as he charged towards the boy intent on punching the boy in the face for the Sanban he had been hit with earlier. Naruto was shocked, he had the Kyubi inside him. Was it true? Why hadn't he been told? Was he really a demon like some of the villagers had claimed? Before he could think any more Mizuki's fist impacted his left cheek and he was sent sprawling to the forest floor. How was that demon boy? Mizuki asked as he smiled maliciously at the boy lying on the ground. I'd say that was the second mistake you've made in this fight Mizuki. Naruto replied as he picked himself up off the ground. What are you babbling about demon? Mizuki questioned as he looked at the now standing form of Naruto. Your first mistake was getting hit by my Sanban. Naruto explained as he looked into Mizuki's eyes. You can't even feel your left arm anymore can you? He asked. To Mizuki's shocked horror he found that he couldn't move his left arm at all. What did you do to me you monster, he yelled at the now grinning Naruto. Oh just a dose of a certain poison that I coated my Sanban with. He said as he stood there with a grin on his face. Your second mistake was punching me. Naruto lectured as he pointed to Mizuki's right fist. Mizuki looked to his own hand and saw it was covered in a thin layer of a sticky green liquid. What is this stuff you demon brat? Mizuki yelled at Naruto who was now slowly waking towards him. Oh that. Naruto replied innocently, that's a highly potent neurotoxin that seeps through the skin and sets off all the pain receptive nerves it encounters. He explained nonchalantly as he took another couple of steps forward. In fact it should start working, right, about, now. Naruto said only to be interrupted as Mizuki began screaming himself hoarse. Ah, you, ah, ah, you demon brat, ah, 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 Mizuki tried to speak but couldn't stop the pain that was now spreading up his right arm. Your third and final mistake, Mizuki, was underestimating me. Naruto yelled as he slammed his right hand with all five fingers in a claw position into Mizuki's chest hard enough to actually bury the tips of his fingers in Mizuki's skin. As Mizuki laid on the ground trying to cough and scream at the same time Naruto stood over him and told him one last thing, before you go into shock and pee out, you traitorous piece of, let me tell you one more little tidbit of information. I can turn my own chakra into a poison. With that poison I can attack or even destroy my opponent's chakra circulatory system. Unfortunately for you I think Gigi's interrogators will want to have a few words with you about your actions here tonight. So I just crippled your chakra network with my poison. After tonight you'll never again be able to mold chakra, your life as a ninja is now over Mizuki. 
reflect on your mistakes and pray for a swift end. With those last words Mizuki sickbed to shock and pet out on the forest floor. Moments later four Anbu and the Hokage landed in the clearing and surrounded Mizuki. We saw everything Naruto. The Hokage stated as Naruto knelt before him. You did well to prevent Mizuki from taking the forbidden scroll. My Anbu will take him to the interrogation headquarters where they'll extract the information from him that we need. After he said that the four Anbu, carefully avoiding Mizuki's poison-coated right hand, took the traitor away in a swirl of leaves. Now, Naruto go home and get some rest I'll explain everything to you tomorrow morning before you go to the academy to meet your team. The Hokage said before he too disappeared in a swirl of leaves. I'll be sure to do that, Hokage-sama. Naruto said before heading home for a good night's sleep. Chapter 2 Explanations and Specialized Teams Naruto awoke the next day two hours before he had to be at the academy for team placements. After taking his morning shower and eating a breakfast of eggs and toast, Naruto brushed his teeth before leaving his apartment and heading for the Hokage Tower. Time for Gigi to explain what Mizuki was yelling about last night. He muttered as he arrived in front of the tower. After being led into the tower and making his way up to the Hokage's office, Naruto greeted the secretary with a small tired smile. She smiled back at him warmly before allowing him into the office. Ah, Naruto, good to see you my boy. Sarutobi said as he looked at the young genin that was now sitting before him. He looks like he hasn't slept well since last night. Sarutobi thought as he studied Naruto's tired face from across his desk. What would you like to ask first Naruto? Sarutobi asked as he filled his pipe with tobacco and lit it with a small application of fire-natured chakra. What I want to know the most, Gigi, is what Mizuki said true. Am I really the Kyubi? Or the villagers write about me being a demon? Naruto asked evenly as he sighed out tiredly. Of course not Naruto, the Kyubi was sealed inside of you, not the other way around. Just as a prisoner is not the prison he sits in, the Kyubi is not you who he is sealed in. The Hokage explained as he exhaled smoke from his mouth. Naruto visibly relaxed as he slumped down in the chair he was seated in. Thank goodness. He sighed as he smiled at the Hokage with his tired features. Don't let what he said bother you Naruto. You are the hero that keeps the Kyubi at bay, without you we would all have been destroyed that night 12 years ago. Sarutobi spoke kindly as he smiled at the boy he viewed as a grandson. Thanks, Gigi, I needed to hear that from someone I could trust. Naruto sighed as he stood up from his chair. Well, I need to be heading to the academy now, with your permission Hokage Gigi. He asked with a bow. Dismissed my boy, no need to be so formal. Sarutobi replied with a chuckle as Naruto walked out of his office. Oh and if you've put me with Sasuke Tem or that shrieking fangirl Sakura I'll have to come back here and have some words with you Gigi. Naruto said as he stuck his head back into Sarutobi's office before closing the door and heading to the academy. Oh, don't worry Naruto, I'm sure you'll enjoy the team I've set up for you, the Hokage thought with a smile as he returned to his work. Meanwhile, Naruto was just arriving at the academy when he suddenly sneezed. Someone must be talking about me. He mumbled as he entered his CL room. Once he entered the CL room Naruto's ears were altered by the sounds of all the students waiting to receive their teams and begin their ninja careers. Sheesh, for future ninja you'd think they'd know when to be quiet, he thought irritably as he took a seat that was still available. Shortly after he sat down the one person Naruto never wanted to sit beside took the seat next to him. Why are you sitting beside me Sasuke? Naruto questioned the Uchiha boy while glancing at him. Shut up Dobi it's the last seat available that isn't being swarmed by those loser Kunoichi who flock to my Uchiha superiority. Sasuke replied as if it was the most obvious thing in the world. What a pompous dumb. Naruto thought as he rolled his eyes at Sasuke's statement. Suddenly everyone in the CL heard what sounded like two elephants charging through the academy hallways. And here comes the terrible twosome. He thought as he looked towards the door to see both Ino and Sakura trying to shove their way through the door to the CL room. Once both had made it into the room they stood there panting before they began shouting at each other. I won forehead. 
Ino yelled at Sakura who responded with, No way Ino pig, my foot crossed the door first. Shortly after they both noticed the object of their affections was already seated and both rushed to greet him. Good morning, Sasuke-kun. They both chorused as they smiled at the raven-haired boy. H.N. was the only reply they got from said boy as he didn't even turn to look at them. Naruto Baka, screeched Sakura, move out of that seat so I can sit next to Sasuke-kun. Naruto simply looked at her with a bored expression before replying. What are you gonna do about tea if I don't, Haruno? He questioned her before his gaze turned steely and he began to stare the girl down. Oh, oh, I'll beat you, out, out of it. She stuttered out as she raised her shaking fist. Oh really? Naruto replied with a raised eyebrow. Why don't you try it then, try it and see where you end up. Sakura hesitated for a second before sending her fist at Naruto's head. Before she knew what was happening Sakura found herself slammed onto the floor and staring up at the ceiling. Naruto hadn't even moved from his chair and was currently holding Sakura by the wrist of the arm she tried to hit him with. Now what did you learn? Naruto questioned her in a bored tone. Ino stood there stunned, Naruto had just put Sakura on the ground with one hand. While sitting down. She quickly rushed towards the back rows and took a seat next to Shikamaru, who was currently dozing. I'm waiting, Haruno. Naruto spoke again as he increased the pressure on Sakura's wrist. I'm sorry, she shouted as the pain was too much for her. Not quite what I was expecting you to learn but it'll do for now. Naruto replied as he let go of her wrist and pulled her to her feet. Next time try being polite when you want something. Sakura nodded as she quickly went to sit next to Ino in the back of the room. When did the Dobi get this strong? Sasuke wondered as he watched Naruto deal with Sakura. I should have that strength. I need it more than he does. I'm an Avenger it. Before Sasuke could question Naruto, Uruka walked into the room with a seaboard in hand and told the CL to settle down. Now I'll read off your team alignments. Wait for your name to be called and listen for your team number. Uruka stated as he started going through the list. After waiting about 10 minutes the first notable name caught Naruto's attention. Team 7 will be, Uchiha Sasuke, Haruno Sakura, and Sai. Uruka announced, much to the dismay of Sasuke's fan club. Except Sakura, who screeched loudly about how true love conquers all. Your sensei will be hot of Kakashi. Uruka finished as he read off the next team. Team 8 will be, Aburame Shino, Inazuka Kiba, and Hayuga Hanada. Uruka said as he fped the page to the next team. I'm not on Naruto's team. Hanada thought sadly as she looked forlornly at the boy she had a crush on. Team 10 will be, Yamanaka Ino, Akamichi Choji, and Nara Shikamaru. Uruka read off as he fped to the last page of his seaboard. Your sensei is Sarutobi Asuma. Lastly, Uruka called out, Uzumaki Naruto you've been taken as an apprentice by Mitarashi Anko. Well now, this just got interesting. Naruto thought with a wide grin on his face. What? Sasuke yelled as he stood up so fast his chair toppled over. Why does the Dobi get an apprenticeship when I, and Uchiha, am stuck on a dead weight team? He yelled as he glared at Naruto. Abruptly a large black cloth ball smashed through the room's windows before unfurling with a kunai stuck in each corner pinning it to the floor and wall. In front of the newly revealed banner was a purple-haired woman that was wearing a fishnet body suit that ended at her thighs, an orange mini skirt, a long tan trench coat, with shin guards over her legs. Behind her the banner read, the great Mitarashi Anko-sama arrives, in bright red kanji. Which one of you brats is Uzumaki Naruto? Anko questioned as she looked around the room. Um, Anko, you're early again. Uruka said as he scratched the back of his head nervously. Well, ah, uh, regardless. Which one of you is Naruto? She asked as she scanned the room again. That would be me, Mitarashi-san. Naruto spoke as he raised his hand. So you're my new apprentice, a eh, brat? She asked as they locked eyes. I guess so. He replied with a smile. I demand to know why you're taking the dobi as an apprentice and not me. Sasuke shouted at Anko, breaking her from her staring match against Naruto. Because I only train the strongest of the strong. 
Enko replied dismissively. And, in all honesty, you just don't cut it Uchiha. You wouldn't be able to survive my training. Naruto laughed out loud from beside Sasuke, while Sasuke himself clenched his fists tightly. Let's go brat. Enko yelled as she jumped back out of the window and started towards the training grounds. Yes sensei. Naruto replied before jumping over his desk and out the window in two leaps. Him. Sasuke mentally shouted as he brooded about Naruto getting what he, and Uchiha, should have received. Naruto caught up with his new sensei before she even got outside the academy grounds. Where to, sensei? He asked as they began roof hopping away from the academy. Straight to training ground 44, of course. Enko replied with a devious smirk on her face as she picked up the pace to challenge Naruto's speed. Straight to the forest of death, huh? Naruto thought with a grin. I think I'm in love already. He mumbled playfully. Enko however, had heard him and with a smirk she remarked, we'll see how long you're in love with me after training. Naruto bowed his head with a blush burning his cheeks as Enko laughed loudly. Once they had arrived at the training ground Enko turned around and told Naruto their unique situation. Alright brat, since the council wants you to advance through the ranks and get strong enough to claim clan status as soon as possible. Hokage-sama has asked me to take you on as my apprentice. She explained as Naruto stood before her and gave her respectful attention. So that's what this is all about. Naruto thought as he remembered the one particular meeting he had with the full council of Konoha. Flashback one week after Naruto discovered his bloodline Naruto had been called by the Hokage to attend a meeting with the council to explain his new situation in the village as well as in the ninja forces. As Naruto was led into the council chambers by the Hokage he was told to stand in the center of the room and wait to be spoken to. This meeting of the council of Konoha is now in session. Sarutobi said as he called the meeting to order. What has this meeting been called for? Hokage-sama, the Sandime's old teammate Mitokato Homura asked as he turned towards his leader. I've called this meeting to announce that a Keke Genke, one that was thought to be extinct for decades now, has reappeared in our very own village. Sarutobi replied as he looked straight ahead at Naruto. You mean this boy, has a, a, the Hokage's other teammate Yudatane Kaharu tried to say as every one of the council members' faces were frozen eye shock. Yes, that's correct. Uzumaki Naruto has awakened a Keke Genke that hasn't been seen in almost 50 years. Sarutobi explained as the council chambers erupted in noise and exclamations of demands. Silence, he yelled out as the council chambers instantly quieted. If I may ask, Hokage-sama. Danzo said from his seat. What Keke Genke has reawakened in this boy? Sarutobi knew Danzo was already plotting ways to get Naruto under his control but he answered nonetheless. Naruto here has reawakened the Dokushu bloodline, a bloodline that hasn't been seen since the start of the Third Great Ninja War. This started the councils arguing almost instantly, shouts about betrothals, breeding, and demands for him to be trained as an obedient weapon were heard throughout the room. I said silence shouted Sarutobi as he slammed a fist on top of his desk. The council quickly became quiet at the intent the old Hokage was releasing. Naruto is under shinobi jurisdiction. Therefore the civilian representatives on the council have no say in any matters pertaining to the boy. With that said the civilians quickly became silent. Hokage-sama, might I take the boy and train him in the ninja arts? I can guarantee the boy will be the most powerful shinobi in our ranks within a few short years. Danzo stated calmly as he eyed the boy like a high quality tool. I have no intention of taking Naruto out of academy for any reason until he graduates, am I clear, Danzo? Sarutobi asked as he leveled the full brunt of his intent on the old war hawk. Hokage-sama, if I may, could I set up a marriage contract with the boy to my daughter? asked one of the civilians with a greedy gleam in his eyes. No way in you civilian hole. Naruto thought as he glared at the man. While it is true that Naruto does qualify for the bloodline clan restoration laws, Sarutobi stated, he will be allowed to choose the woman or women he settles down with to start his family in the future. Naruto smirked at the civilians as they all gained sour looks on their faces. 
then Uzumaki-san must be allowed to claim clan head status as soon as possible. Kaharu proclaimed as she looked at the other shinobi clan heads. Unfortunately for Uzumaki-san, he must have a bloodline along with a rank of chunin or higher. Not to mention at least one heir or a woman carrying his child, to start the clan he will be head of. Stated Hayuga Hiyashi as he read a copy of Kanaha's clan laws from a scroll in front of him. I'm sure Naruto will make Chunin shortly after he graduates the academy. However, how long until he has an heir is up to him. Sarutobi remarked as he motioned Naruto to speak. I'll make Chunin as soon as I can after graduation Hokage-sama. Naruto spoke, however I'd like to be at least 13 or 14 before I even consider having a child. I'm only 8, I can't be a dad yet. He said as he gained the cute confused expression of a child his age. End flashback after that day Naruto had worked harder than ever towards mastering his bloodline. By the time graduation had rolled around Naruto had gotten his bloodline to the point of near mastery. He could instinctively activate his Dokusuken one at any moment that he sensed a hostile motion towards himself. Not to mention that he could control what type of poison he produced at the same moment. He had also pushed the boundaries of his bloodline into several new techniques that he had created from theories inside the scroll the Sandame had given him the day he discovered his Keke Jenke. All right brat. Enko called to her new apprentice. I need to test you to see where you stand in the ninja arts. Naruto smiled at her before replying. All right and how do you plan to test me sensei? Enko smirked evilly, the best way of course. By sparring until you drop. With that she charged at Naruto with a kunai in each hand. Naruto smirked at her before meeting her charge with two kunai of his own. Enko made the first swipe with her left kunai before stabbing with her right. Naruto dodged the left swipe and blocked the stab with his own kunai before bringing his own down on Enko's head. She quickly kicked him away and threw both of her kunai at him as she jumped back before launching four snakes from her right sleeve. Naruto knocked both kunai away and jumped away from the snakes. To his surprise the four snakes changed course and followed him towards the other side of the clearing. That's surprising. Naruto thought before using both kunai to decapitate all four snakes causing them to disappear in puffs of smoke. Brats, not bad. Enko mused before speeding through hand seals and sending a Kaden Gukaku 2 at Naruto's location. He looked at the incoming fireball before smirking. Doesn't hold back at all, I like that, he thought before speeding through his own hand seals. Sweet in Tepidama. 3. Naruto exclaimed before sending a ball of water of equal size towards the fireball. The two opposing attacks slammed into each other in a large splash of water and steam. So you know how to use more than your bloodline, huh brat? Enko questioned as she put a little distance between herself and the dispersing cloud of steam. Of course, sensei. I'm not so arrogant as to think that my bloodline is invincible like most other bloodline clans. Naruto replied before taking up a taijutsu stance and waiting for Enko's next move. I'm starting to like you already brat. Enko yelled as she disappeared from Naruto's line of sight for an instant before reappearing behind him with a back fist aimed at his left temple. To her shock Naruto's forearm blocked her attack while his right elbow came around as he spun and nicked her side before she managed to jump away. You're good brat I'll give you that. But how about you show me what you can really do. Enko questioned with a smirk. All right sensei, but remember, you asked for it. With that Naruto shed his burnt orange over shirt leaving him in just his mesh undershirt and ninja pants. He took a deep breath and when he exhaled a dark purple mist came from his mouth. Before long a dark greenish purple chakra coated his exposed arms, back and chest with a purple and green mist rising off said areas and lingering around the boy. Impressive. Enko thought as she watched his display. This makes taijutsu all but suicidal. With that thought Enko sped through another set of hand seals before sending a Sweden Mizorapa 4 at the boy to test his bloodline's defensive capabilities. Naruto quickly sidestepped the high-pressured blast of water before making a punching motion towards Enko on the other side of the clearing. Enko was slightly surprised when a column of greenish smoke came flying at her at the same speed as a punch, 
she quickly jumped up to the tree branch above herself before looking down at the area she stood in previously. The ground where she once stood was covered in dead gr and the air around it was filled with the lingering remains of the poisonous smoke the blonde had sent at her. You like it sensei? Naruto questioned from his position in the clearing. I call it Dokukamuri no Jutsu. 5. Naruto explained as he prepared another punch after. It lets me launch poison attacks at my opponent from a distance. Enko quickly masked her shock before replying, not bad brat. Try this on for size. With that remark she again disappeared from his sight. Next thing he realized, several kanai and shuriken were heading at him from various directions. Naruto quickly dodged the projectiles before he spun around and launched another punch at Anko who was rushing up behind him with a kanai out to stab him from behind. The same green smoke launched from his fist and impacted the woman sending her tumbling back into the ground. To Naruto's slight surprise the Anko he hit dissolved into mud while another Anko appeared on top of a tree branch several feet to his right. Suchi Bunshin, 6, huh? Naruto questioned as he looked at her. Anko said nothing as several more Anko clones emerged from the surrounding woods. So using clones that can't be poisoned to counteract my bloodline. While it makes Taijutsu a possible attack method the clones will disperse shortly after striking me. Naruto said as he quickly jumped higher and higher into the trees. Then again for only a little more chakra than you used to make all those clones, I can do this, he exclaimed as he finished a string of hand seals. My asthma no jutsu. 7, he yelled as he spewed a thick purple, almost black, cloud of poison from his mouth. The jutsu fell almost like water as it was released down into the clearing below. All of the clones were swept away by the jutsu's amazing density and when it hit the ground the entire clearing floor was covered in a thick poisonous cloud that was several feet high. Naruto scanned the treetops as he looked for his sensei. He knew she was far too crafty to have been taken down by that attack. Now all he had to do was wait for the counter attack. He didn't have to wait long before a cry of, food and datapa. 8. Sent him face first into the tree in front of him. How do you like that brat? Anko questioned before she threw several pairs of kanai, with a length of ninja wire connecting each pair, all around Naruto. Effectively pinning him to the tree. Not bad at all, sensei. Naruto mumbled with his face still in the tree. But I've still got a jutsu for situations when I can't move to defend myself. He mumbled out before bringing his hands together between him and the tree and going through several hand seals. Yudoku Yuko no jutsu, 9. Naruto yelled as he completed the jutsu. Suddenly the purple and green mist that surrounded Naruto compressed into five separate clouds of poison. Each cloud then took on a distinctly vulpine form before opening bright green eyes. All five dark purple poison cloud foxes locked their glowing green eyes on Anko before rushing her all at once. What the? Anko yelled and asked at the same time as she had to duck and weave to avoid these strange poison creatures that Naruto had created. One of the foxes dubbed down from above Anko as she jumped to avoid another that tried to take a bite out of her side. She saw it coming and sidestepped the fox and watched it fall into the miasma that was still coating the forest floor below. Before she could wonder if that had taken it out two other foxes tried to catch her in a pincer maneuver. She jumped over both of them before grabbing the branch above herself and swinging up onto it. She thought with a grimace. These things are fast and agile as. Not to mention I can't touch them without getting poisoned. Enko quickly moved to avoid a fox trying to get the jump on her and landed several feet behind where she had just stood. Alright, she thought excitedly as she saw all four foxes directly in front of her. Now I'll just torch all the s and be done with them. She quickly started hand seals for a kaden jutsu before she felt a searing pain in her right leg. Quote exclamation mark. That ing hurts. Anko yelled as she looked down to find the fox that had fallen into the miasma biting into her leg. It. She thought as she kicked the fox back towards its companions. I should have known poison wouldn't destroy these things. They're made of poison. When the one she kicked landed in front of its compatriots the other four that were moving to attack stopped in their tracks. Kaden Karyu Endant 10. 
Anko shouted as she unleashed a MIV fire dragon at the foxes who, taken by surprise, were instantly torched and incinerated by the flames. Take that US. She panted out as she felt the poison beginning to take effect. My vision's getting blurry. She thought as she felt her strength leaving her. She jumped to the branch Naruto was pinned on and held a kunai to his throat. I, win, you little, brat. Anko panted as she cut the wires holding him while she collapsed to the branch they were standing on. Don't worry Anko sensei, I'll remove the toxins from you. You'll be awake and feeling better in a couple minutes. Naruto stated as he began drawing the poison out of her body with a green and purple chakra covered hand. After having removed the toxins from Anko's body Naruto couldn't help but stare at her sleeping form. Man, being on missions with her is gonna be awkward with how she dresses. He thought with a blush as he couldn't keep his eyes from roaming her body at least once. Still, I don't think I could ask for a better sensei. Hopefully when she wakes up I'll know where she plans to start my training. He thought as he kept watch over her as she rested from their intense spar. Several minutes later Anko groaned before opening her eyes. What the happened? She asked before mumbling. Oh right, I got bitten by one of the brat's foxes. Looking up she saw the smiling face of said brat before he spoke. Did you sleep well, Anko sensei? Naruto asked as he helped her sit up. I'll be fine brat. I have to say you've got some rather impressive skills for a genin. She commented before standing up and popping her back. So what level do you rank me at sensei? He questioned with a curious look on his face. You're a solid chunin level ninja already, brat. She replied. Give me until tomorrow and I'll have your rank in all of the aspects you've shown me in this fight. Naruto smiled widely at her estimate before standing up himself. Well, where to now sensei? Naruto asked. Let's head into the village to celebrate your graduation to Genin. Enko replied as she started tree hopping to get out of the forest of death and into the village proper. Naruto nodded before following along behind her. After they had reached the restaurant area of the business district they had immediately gotten into an argument about what to have to celebrate. We're having dango you brat and that's final. Anko yelled as she stomped her foot on the ground. Oh come on sensei. Why can't we have ramen? I always have ramen when I celebrate something. Naruto said as he tried to give her puppy dog eyes. Sorry brat, that look only works for us women. Anko said as she smirked at him. Alright, I can be a gentleman when I need to be. Naruto sighed before he straightened up and offered Anko his arm. Care to lead the way sensei? He asked politely. Anko snorted before taking the offered arm and leading him to her favorite dango place. Just don't try and get fresh brat. You wouldn't like what happens if you did. She warned as she brought him into the shop. One order of dango for me and the brat old man. Anko ordered with a small as she sat at the bar with Naruto to her right. Coming right up Anko-san. The old chef said as he began to make her order. So brat, now that we have a few minutes why don't you tell me about yourself? She asked as Naruto took a sip of water from his GL before nodding. Alright. My name is Uzumaki Naruto. I like Hokage Gigi, poisons, training, reading, and my new sensei. I dislike Sasuke and all his annoying fangirls, people who judge others, rapists, people that hurt children, and people who look down on women just because they're female. My hobbies are training, reading, gardening, experimenting with my bloodline, and making friends. My dreams for the future are to become a clan head and start a family. And if possible be Hokage for a while so I can protect Konoha. When he finished Anko was rather happy about his introduction. Seems we've finally found a bloodline user that doesn't think the world of himself. He even seems to have a rather high respect for women, that's always a plus in a man. Anko thought before she started her own introduction. My name is Mitarashi Anko, I like Dango, Sake, my friends Kurenai, Hana, and Yugao, and the old man Hokage. I dislike arrogant pricks, my former sensei, chauvinist pigs, rapists, child abusers, traitors, and people who judge others based on past oceations. My hobbies are training, working in the torture and interrogation department, and hanging out with my friends. My dream is to kill my sensei, or at least know that he's dead. 
I'd also like to find a man that'll treat me right and have a family. She finished with a small blush as she thought about having a husband and child of her own. Order up, said the old chef as he placed two plates loaded with dango in front of Naruto and Anko. You know I never took you for a woman that was into younger men Anko-san. The old chef giggled perversely. Oh shut it, Genji Asen. She replied with a light blush on her cheeks. He's my student not a date. Naruto nodded but turned towards the old chef and said, I would be greatly honored if Anko sensei would take me as her date, though. The old chef laughed loudly while Anko blushed scarlet and quickly put Naruto in a headlock. Don't get why brat. You've got a long way to go before you gain that kind of privilege. She said as she messed up his hair with her free hand. After the two had finished their celebratory meal they parted ways for the evening. Naruto went to his apartment to tend to his poison garden while Anko went to go write up her preliminary report for the Hokage. After a couple hours Anko had finished her report and turned it over to the Hokage for his inspection. After she had left Sarutobi and his former teammates opened the file and perused its contents. Anko's report is requested by the Hokage of Kanahagakur no Sato, I, Mitarashi Anko, tested one Uzumaki Naruto's abilities in the ninja arts in a full sparring match with no restrictions. From said match I've ranked Uzumaki Naruto's skills according to his proficiency as displayed. Name. Uzumaki Naruto Age. 12 Status. Active Ninja Rank. Genin. Ninjutsu Rank. CCL Junin Gen Jutsu Rank. Unknown, likely Genin level. Taijutsu Rank. A CL Chunin Weapons Rank. A CL Chunin Speed Rank. CCL Chunin. Reaction Time Rank. BCL Chunin Overall Ranking. BACL Chunin End Anko's Report. This bolds well for Naruto making Chunin on this year's exams. They'll even be held shortly after his birthday if I'm correct. Spoke Sarutobi as he finished the report. That is Yuming you to also give your support to the boy to participate. Both Homura and Kaharu looked at the Hokage before speaking. Sarutobi, you know neither of us holds anything against the boy. Said Kaharu as she looked at her former teammate. She's correct Sarutobi. We hold no ill will for young Naruto, but, we fear that beast inside him more than anything else in this world. Homura finished with a scared tone. The possibility of that beast and its power falling into an enemy's hands is the only reason we would ever deny the boy a chance to participate in anything. Kaharu said as she sat down beside Sarutobi. We'll all make sure that such a thing never happens. Sarutobi replied as he rolled up the scroll and placed it in his robes. Now I bid you both good night. It has been a long day and I think we all could use some rest. With a nod the two advisors parted ways with the Hokage and all three left to their own residences. Chapter 3 Missions in Full Toxicity Naruto awoke at 7 in the morning the day after testing to meet Anko for their first mission together. As he was going through his morning routine he began to wonder what his first few missions with his new sensei were going to be like. I doubt it'll be anything incredible. Naruto thought as he locked his apartment and made his way to the mission's office to meet his sensei and receive their first mission. Once Naruto was in sight of the doors to the Hokage Tower he saw his sensei leaning against the wall beside the doors. When she looked up at him he gave her a cheerful grin before greeting her. Good morning, Anko sensei He said before he gave her a respectful bow. Good morning, brat. Anko replied as she smirked at him. Let's go start the most boring missions of your life. She said with a sigh before leading him into the tower. After receiving a few D-rank missions from the Chunin on duty, both sensei and student left the mission's office and headed for the home of their first client of the day. After arriving at one of the multitudes of small farms on the outskirts of the village walls the duo knocked on the front door. Moments later an elderly man answered and after seeing their headbands smiled and let them into his living room. So, you two are the ninja that are gonna get rid of those vermin for me? The old man questioned as his equally old wife served them both some tea. Yes sir, that's what we're her for. Anko answered as she sipped her tea. So what kind of vermin do you need exterminated? Naruto questioned as he also sipped his tea. I need those rats out of my fields and out of my chicken coops. 
the old man complained as he scratched his gray hair in exhaustion as he suddenly looked his full age. Rats, sir. Naruto questioned as he finished his tea. That's right youngin, but I'm certain these ain't no normal rats. They always escape the traps I use and sometimes they even take the bait without setting the traps off. There ain't no normal rats that can do that. The old farmer said as he sighed tiredly. Don't worry, sir. Enko said kindly, we'll have the whole population taken care of before lunch after. The old man's face lit up with a small smile as he showed them the way to the barn where he kept his crops after harvesting them. This is where the monsters do the most damage. He said as he showed them all of the debated traps. Well I'll leave you youngins to it, let me know when those monsters are all gone. The old man said before he went back to his house to await the results. All right brat, since this is our first mission I'll be helping you. Enko said as she pulled out a kanai. When you see a rat you do this. With that she threw her kanai and impaled a dark gray rat through the head. Seems simple enough. Naruto replied before taking out several of his poisoned senban and letting them loose into six other rats that had come out from behind one of the many farming tools lining the walls of the barn. Within a second all six rats were completely still and quite obviously dead. They both kept at it for about an hour before deeming the barn cleared out. After moving to the large chicken coop the two began the process of removing the infestation of rats. About half an hour after the two began something strange happened with one of the rats Naruto targeted with his senban. To both Naruto and Anko's shock the rat not only stood on its hind legs, it also rapidly moved its head out of the path of the senban and looked at them with an affronted look on its small face. What was that for? The small rodent questioned the two ninja as it sniffed at them from the wall it stood in front of. Anko sensei Naruto said. Yeah brat. Enko questioned. Did that rat just speak to us? He asked. Yes, yes it did. She replied as she put her kanai away. I believe we may have just stumbled upon the root of our client's problem. She said as she knelt down and looked at the rat. You're a summon animal aren't you? When she said that Naruto's eyes widened and he began to walk over to the rat cautiously. Do you have a human summoner? Enko asked as she let the rat sniff her hand. No. Nope can't say I do snake lady. The rat replied as he sat back down and scratched his side with his back leg. Snake lady. Naruto asked the rat with a pointed look. Yeah, she smells like the snake summons. The rat answered as he began sniffing Naruto. Why are you here if you weren't summoned? Enko questioned as she watched the rat climb up Naruto's arm while continually sniffing the boy. Looking for some good food, of course. The rat replied as he sat in Naruto's hair and looked at Anko lazily. How long have you been here? Naruto asked as he tried to look up at the rat on his head. Just a few weeks. The rat sighed as it rolled around in Naruto's soft blonde hair. Or all these other rats summons? Anko asked as the rat snuggled deeper into Naruto's hair. Nah, they're regular everyday dumb rats. The rat replied as it curled up for a nap on Naruto's head. So you're the only summon here. You're the rat that's been debating all the traps. Naruto questioned the lazily dozing rat. Yeah I guess that'd be me. The rat replied tiredly. Now will you let me sleep? The rat asked as it went back to dozing on Naruto's head. Yeah, sure, have a nice nap big guy. Naruto replied kindly as he stood up. Alright brat, I'm sure you could finish this up real quick with a little poison. Enko said as she stepped outside the coop and waited for Naruto's all clear. Shortly after departing clouds of poison started drifting out of the open door and all the small windows. A few minutes later Naruto came out with a burlap sack of dead rats. That should be all of them Enko sensei. He replied as they headed back to the client's house. After dropping off the sack of dead rats and telling the old farmer that the rat population had been decimated. They got their mission scroll signed by the client and headed off to their next D rank. Their next mission turned out to be the infamous Retrieve Tora mission. After tracking the cat into the forest, Naruto released a poisoned senban into its back leg and let it run off. Once they had tracked it down again the cat was already fast asleep and unable to put up a fight. 
when Enko and Naruto returned the sleeping cat to its owner and getting the mission signed off on is complete they went to complete their final task for the day. The last mission of the day was walking the Inazuka dogs. Once the two had arrived the clan head, Inazuka Sum, led them to the kennels where her daughter, Inazuka Hana, was waiting with the dogs on leashes. Just walk them around the park down the street and bring them back. That'll be enough exercise for today. Sum told them as Hana gave the leashes to Naruto. Of course, Inazuka Sama. I'll take good care of them Inazuka Haim. Naruto said to Sum and Hana respectively. After Naruto said that Sum gained a feral grin while Hana smirked with a light blush on her cheeks. What's this about brat? I thought you were in love with me. Enko teasingly pouted at him. But you said I haven't earned it yet. Naruto replied with a joking smile. Em, well, if you do this well enough I'm sure Hana and I could give you a little, tip, for your services. Sum said with a grin as Naruto blushed and stuttered out that it wasn't necessary. Shortly afterwards Naruto was being halfway dragged around the park by the 12 or so dogs that he held by leashes. Would you guys at least go in the same direction? He asked the dogs as they once again went multiple directions. After finally getting the dogs around the park and back to the Inazuka compound. Hana put the dogs into their kennels while Naruto sat on the back porch of Sum's house gulping down a bottle of water. Well, looks like you did pretty well Naruto. Sum said as she came up to him from the kennels. The dogs looked quite happy with their walk. Hana added as she quickly gave him a small on the cheek before retreating into the house. Naruto was blushing up a storm and trying to talk before Sum burst out laughing at the embered teenage boy. After Naruto calmed down he stood before Sum and asked her to sign the mission scroll. Once she signed it and Naruto put it into his pouch for later delivery, Sum quickly grasped his jaw and brought his to hers in an intense that left Naruto stunned. Naruto's jaw dropped as his mind stalled as he tried to process what was happening. When Naruto's mouth opened Sum took her chance of pushed her into his mouth while grabbing his right hand and placing it on her firm. Naruto's mind had completely shut down at this point and he just stood there dumbly. Once she'd had her fun Sum released the boy who simply stood there transfixed. Uh oh Sum, I think you broke him. Enko chuckled as she waved her hand in front of Naruto's unblinking face. Sum chuckled as well before responding. Yeah. He should wake up in a few minutes. She replied. Though I wouldn't mind taking him to my bed at all, either. Sum finished while leering at Naruto. Yeah, he'd probably be a great father. Enko said with a smirk as she watched Naruto continue to stand there unmoving. I bet the pups he'd father would be incredibly strong as well. Makes me want him all the more. Sum responded with a grin as Naruto finally regained movement before blushing up a storm and practically sprinting out of the Inazuka compound. Both Anko and Sum laughed loudly at the teenager's innocence. Maybe he'll be interested in a clan alliance in a couple months once he makes Chunin. Sum pondered out loud as she sat on her poor chapter, I'll ask him for ya. Anko responded before leaving the compound with a wave and a smile. When Enko caught up to Naruto he was still blushing and trying to calm down. What's wrong brat? Not used to the wiles of women. Enko questioned with a laugh as she walked beside him. I I I um, I, no, I'm not. He stuttered out as they walked towards the Hokage Tower. Quote question mark. What did I miss? Questioned the summon rat as he poked his head out of Naruto blonde locks. You're still there. Naruto questioned as he tried to look up at the rat. How did you stay up there this whole time? He asked as the rat stretched out before sitting on top of his head. I wrapped myself in your hair. Makes a great blanket by the way. The rat explained as he scratched his ear. So what are you still doing here? Enko questioned as she eyed the summon. Well, since Poison Man here was kind enough to let me nap in his hair, I thought I'd put in a good word for him with the boss. The summon rat answered with a shrug. You mean you want to ask your boss to allow me to summon your kind? Naruto questioned in shock while Anko's eyes widened as well. Yep. The rat replied before he disappeared in a puff of smoke. Brat, you might just be getting a summoning contract before you're even out of the academy for more than a month. Anko said as she continued on towards the Hokage Tower. 
Time skip one month later after a month of D-rank missions Anko finally snapped. It old man. Give us at least a C rank. I'm tired of these boring chores. After her outburst she blushed and recomposed herself. I mean, I believe my apprentice is more than ready for more difficult missions. She said as she bowed to the aged leader. Naruto was simply nodding his head in agreement with his sensei. Very well Anko, I'll trust your judgment on this matter. Sarutobi replied as he pulled a scroll out of the C-rank stack and gave it to her. There's a gang of bandits on the outskirts of Takiji village that have been causing too much trouble. They've been linked to theft, and murder already. The town elder has commissioned us to get rid of them by any means necessary. I trust you too with resolving this quickly. He said as Anko looked over the mission scroll. Yes sir, Hokage-sama. Both Anko and Naruto replied with a bow as they left the mission office to prepare for their mission. Once the two met up at the gates of the village Anko checked Naruto's gear. After deeming it acceptable for a few day long C rank, they took off into the forest and began tree hopping. After tree hopping for several hours, the duo came to a stop in a small clearing far from the main pathways. All right brat, we'll make camp here for the night and arrive in the village tomorrow morning. Anko said as she started setting up a tent for the night. I'll get the firewood for tonight, Anko sensei. Naruto said before he went into the forest to collect what they'd need. After bringing back an armload of firewood as well as two rabbits he had killed with a well-placed kanai each, Naruto and Anko set about cooking their own rabbit over the newly made fire. After dinner Naruto noticed that Anko hadn't set up the tent he'd brought and asked her about it. I'm not going to hold your hand through this mission brat. Either set up your own tent or sleep in mine. She responded before going into her tent for the night. Afterwards Naruto simply set up his own tent before going to bed for the night. Anko thought with slight disappointment. I was kinda hoping he'd take me up on my offer. With that final thought she drifted off to sleep for the night. The next morning after a short breakfast of pre-made food the two headed towards Takiji at top speed. When they arrived the two could tell the village had been haired several times by the bandits they had come to eliminate. After being shown to the village elder and explaining that they were the team sent to rid them of their bandit problem, the elder directed them to the last known camp of the bandits and begged them to get rid of them before their village was attacked again. Anko and Naruto had no trouble tracking the bandits to the camp as the bandits obviously didn't bother covering their tracks. After scouting the camp and determining that all the bandits were there the two ninja waited for nightfall before they made a move. All right brat, show me some of that poison work of yours. Anko told Naruto. He nodded before going through hand seals and whispering, Inbijiburu dokuso no jutsu. One, with that Naruto inhaled deeply before breathing out a colorless, odorless toxin into the camp. Once he used the jutsu he told Anko to wait 5 minutes before he'd go down into the camp and make sure everyone was dead. After the 5 minutes had passed Naruto ventured down into the camp and began checking pulses. Once he'd checked the last pulse of the last bandit. He exited the tent before making his way back to let Anko know she could torch the camp and they could complete their mission. When he reached the center of camp he sensed incoming projectiles and hit the ground. He heard three distinct hits and when he looked up he saw three kanai lodged in a wooden post he had been walking past before he ducked. He looked back to where the kanai came from to see a ninja, from Kusa, if the headband was any indication. The thing that Naruto noticed the most however was the slash mark going through the metal plate that denoted the man before him as a missing nin. So you're the little brat that took out all my little minions, he asked as he pulled out more kanai. So you're the leader of these s. Naruto questioned as he got ready for combat. Yeah, I am. The Kusa Nin replied. I'm also the leader of these guys. He said with a laugh as he snapped his fingers and 20 bandits came out from hiding. Let me guess. Naruto asked. You have a few rebreathers don't you? The Kusa Nin and his goons laughed as they showed off their masks that let them survive the poison. Figures s bags like you would have stolen something like that. Naruto remarked while slowly circulating mib amounts of chakra through his body. Suddenly Anko landed behind Naruto and pulled out her own kanai while she stared down the thugs. Seems you ran into some trouble brat. 
She said with a smirk. No trouble sensei, just a little unfinished business. He replied with a smile at her. Check out the babe. The Kusa missing nin called out as he and his men leered at Anko's body. Don't get any ideas. Anko snarled at him. Don't worry slut. We'll be having a lot of fun with you once we get rid of the brat. The Kusa missing nin responded as his men cheered. I'm afraid you and your goons won't get the chance, you dumb. Naruto said as he started releasing mib amounts of thick poisonous smoke from his body. Anko sensei, please step back and observe. I'll show you my true full power right now. Naruto said as Anko looked at him questioningly. You sure brat? She asked with a raised eyebrow. Yes, I don't want you to get caught up in my techniques. He replied with a serious tone. All right brat, take them out. I've wondered what the full extent of your bloodline was since I saw it in action. Anko told him before she left backwards and onto the roof of a second story house about 100 feet behind Naruto. Kill that little. The Kusa missing nin yelled as all of the bandits charged at Naruto with weapons drawn. Foolish. Yudoku Fudan. Doku Daitapa. 2. Naruto yelled as he unleashed a mib surge of poisonous wind at the bandits that sent them all flying back into several tents. Ha. You stupid punk. Did you forget we all have these rebreathers? The ex Kusa Nin laughed as the bandits began to get up from the ruined tents. Nope, that was just a test. Here's where this macker is going to get interesting. Naruto said as he sped through several more hand seals. Yudoku Sweden. Dokuso Tepudama. 3. He shouted before firing off 5 spheres of pure liquid poison at the bandits. Five bandits were hit while ten more were splashed by poison that flew off the first five bandits. Shortly after they were hit all fifteen bandits were on the ground screaming out in intense pain. Before the other bandits could recover Naruto was moving in with his hands covered in chakra. Akidoku Sentu. 4. Naruto yelled as he punched the first bandit in the jaw. The second bandit got a back fist to his throat, while the third got a knife hand to the back of the neck. The fourth and fifth both got palm heels into their chins and were unconscious before they hit the ground. The ex Kusa Nin was stunned. This kid had just taken out 20 full grown men in less than a minute. This wasn't some ordinary genin. This kid was some kind of monster. Doden. Suchi Bunshin no Jutsu, the Kusa missing Nin yelled out as he created 20 clones. You can't beat me you little, all the clones yelled as they charged the boy. Naruto nimbly dodged between the strikes of the Kusa missing Nin and his clones before being surrounded by the clones. Now we've got you it. The ex Kusa Nin yelled out with a laugh. Not really, now you're all in range. Naruto said as he smirked before unleashing the mib amount of chakra he'd built up inside of his body. Dokushu Haijutsu. Hakyoku no Dokuso. 5. He yelled as a mib explosion of dark green poisonous smoke and purple liquid poison exploded off his body and covered the entire camp in multiple types of poison. It brat. Anko yelled as she had just barely managed to outrun the boy's jutsu. Shortly after the jutsu was used Anko saw Naruto walk out of the thick green smoke and stand before her. The poisons should wear off in a couple hours, Anko sensei. I got that guy's head sealed in this scroll. He said as he showed her a plain ceiling scroll. That jutsu takes an load of chakra even for me. But there's no chance of survival for any living thing caught inside the blast radius. Naruto explained before Anko smacked him in the back of the head. If it has a 0% chance of survival, then don't use it when I'm in range you brat. She yelled at him before she started dragging him back to Takiji village to report a completed mission and to get the elder to sign the mission scroll. Yes, Anko sensei, sorry Anko sensei. Naruto replied as he started walking beside her. After getting the scroll signed by the elder after showing him the head of the Kusa missing nin, the two left Takiji village and headed back to Konoha. When night fell Naruto set up his tent while Anko hunted their dinner. After Anko returned with a small boar they roasted it and had a large meal as a sort of celebration for Naruto's first completed C rank mission. Once the meal was completed Naruto went into his tent to sleep for the night. Just before he fell asleep he heard the tent flap open. When he swow up to see who it was he saw Anko entering his tent. Um, what are you doing sensei? 
he questioned as she closed the tent flap. I'm getting ready to go to sleep. What's it look like, brat? She asked as she sped her trench coat off giving Naruto an eyeful of her fishnet clad s. Enko sensei. Naruto panicked as he used his blanket to block his eyes. Don't get so excited brat. I told you I came in here to sleep. I don't plan on having sex with you tonight. She said as she used her trench coat as a blanket and laid down beside him. Oh, okay, whatever you say Enko sensei. Naruto replied before turning over so that his back was to his sensei. Good night sensei. He said as he tried to fall back to sleep. Night brat. Enko replied as she snuggled into her trench coat. The next morning Enko woke up shortly after sunrise. As she sat up and stretched she noticed that Naruto had twisted himself out of his blankets. Restless little brat aren't you. She thought before looking down to see if she could get out of the tent without waking him. She stopped when she saw that Naruto was sporting his, morning problem, and stared at it transfixed. The little brat has to be close to 6 inches, and he hasn't even finished growing yet. Enko thought shocked at Naruto's impressive growth in, that, certain department. Without really thinking her hand began to inch towards Naruto's length, once her fingertips touched it she instantly wrapped her hand around it. He's at least 2 inches wide. She thought as she felt her cheeks warm up in a blush. Um, ah, uh, Naruto mumbled in his sleep as Anko's eyes snapped towards his face. Thankfully he continued to sleep. Anko went back to looking at Naruto's erection, she began to stroke it at a slow pace with a blush still on her face. Naruto was groaning constantly in his sleep at this point. That's right brat, you like that don't you? You like what Anko sensei is doing to you? You want her to make you, right? Enko thought with her lust clouded mind. Whoa. Wait. What am I doing? He's only 12 for Kami's sake. I need to get out of this tent and calm down. She mentally screamed before bolting out of the tent to clear her head. Almost half an hour later Naruto crawled out of the tent and looked around for his sensei. You finally ready to go brat? Enko asked as she stood in the middle of the clearing. Yes, sensei. Naruto said before he quickly sealed the tent away and they both began tree hopping back towards Konoha. As they were making their way back Enko decided to make some light conversation. Hey brat, what kind of jutsu did you use to cause that mib blast of poison that wiped out that camp? She asked with some curiosity. Oh, that was one of the haijutsu I've created for my clan. It can only be used by someone that has the dokushu mastered to an instinctual level like I do. It's also a technique that uses my full toxicity. Naruto explained as they continued to jump from tree to tree. I see, I guess I'll have to start requesting more C ranks like this one then. Just so I can see some more of these bloodline techniques of yours. She stated as she pushed off the branch she was on. By the way brat, what do you mean by, full toxicity? Enko asked as she looked towards Naruto. It means I use my full spectrum of poisons in one single jutsu. There is no way to make an antidote for someone that has been poisoned multiple times with various poisons. Anyone hit by a full toxicity attack from any of my future clan members won't be able to survive. He explained as they both could finally see the gates of Konoha through the trees. Once they had arrived and made their way to the Hokage's office the two stood before the old man and gave him their mission report as well as the signed mission scroll. I see, so a missing nin from Kusa was controlling the bandits. That would explain why Takiji village's police force couldn't handle them. Sarutobi stated as he exhaled the smoke from his pipe. But in any case I'm sure Kusa will enjoy receiving this man's head. I'll be sure to call you in when they send the bounty money to us Naruto. He said with a proud grandfatherly smile on his old face. Thanks Gigi. Naruto said with a smile as he rubbed the back of his head. Also, since you did encounter and battle a foreign shinobi I'll have to mark the mission as AB rank to compensate for the increased risk. Congratulations Naruto, you're officially the youngest genin to complete AB rank mission in over a decade. The Sandame said with a grin. Awesome Gigi. Now everyone will know how great me and Anko sensei are as a team. Naruto exclaimed happily while Anko just smirked at him and the old Hokage chuckled at his antics. 
It was shortly after leaving the mission office that Anko and Naruto went their separate ways. Anko went to catch up with her friends at their favorite hangout while Naruto headed towards his apartment to tend to his poison garden. On the way to his home Naruto ran into the one team he would rather have avoided by any means possible. Team 7 was walking down the same path as Naruto when they saw him and approached him. Hey Dobi, have you been dropped out of the ninja forces yet? Sasuke asked with a smirk on his face. Yeah Baka, have you been kicked out so everyone can see how much better Sasuke-kun is? Sakura screeched at him. Sai simply stood there with an obviously fake smile adorning his face. Kakashi looked up from his book before hitting Sasuke lightly on the head with it. You shouldn't say things like that Sasuke. Naruto's a fellow leaf nin and you may have to work with him at some point. Kakashi scolded before I smiling at Naruto. How have you been since graduating Naruto? He asked as Sasuke scowled at both Kakashi and Naruto. I've been well Kakashi-san. Naruto answered with a small smile. Enko sensei and I just got back from a successful B-ranked mission. He said as Kakashi's eye widened while Sasuke automatically yelled out. You lie, Dobi. They wouldn't let a loser like you do a B-ranked mission before an elite Uchiha like me. Sakura, ever the faithful lapdog, automatically supported him. Yeah you lying baka, you couldn't even complete a B-rank. Only Sasuke-kun could do that kind of mission already, she shrieked at him. Naruto was cleaning out his ears from Sakura's yelling before he sighed and looked at Kakashi. If you'll approve it Kakashi-san, I'd like to prove to your team that I'm more than capable of completing a mission that I've already completed. He said as he looked at Kakashi with a bored expression. Sure, I'm sure it'll be educational for them. Kakashi replied before leading them all to training ground 3. When they arrived Kakashi started to explain the rules of the sparring match after. Alright, this is just a sparring match after so no lethal blows and nothing that'll cripple anyone. Other than that anything goes, but if I call a match that means it's over. Now this will be one-on-one -on -one sparring, at this point Naruto interrupted him and asked. Actually, Kakashi-san, if it's all the same to you I'd prefer if you'd make it a three-on-one match after. I have some other things to take care of that doesn't involve beating those weaker than me. He said as he looked at the three members of Team 7. Well if you're sure Naruto. Kakashi said while Naruto nodded at him. All right then, Hajime. Kakashi yelled while he chopped his hand down between Naruto and Team 7. Sasuke instantly sprang forward at Naruto with a punch after. At the same time Sakura stood in the same place and cheered Sasuke on while Sai jumped back and disappeared into the surrounding forest. Naruto saw Sasuke coming at him and simply sighed before dodging the punch and back fisting Sasuke's right cheek. Sasuke hit the ground hard and laid there stunned. Sasuke-kun. Sakura screeched as she tried to run past Naruto to get to her crush. Naruto however didn't let her as he grabbed the back of the collar of her shirt and drug her back in front of him before punching her in the stomach and knocking the wind out of her. You shouldn't be so focused on the Uchiha, Haruno. You left yourself wide open. Naruto said as he quickly back fisted the ink lion that had tried to pounce on him from behind. Naruto turned around and saw nine more ink lions preparing to attack him. Come on then, he said with a smile. All nine lions charged at him and he quickly dodged Sasuke's ur punch from behind. Predictable, Uchiha. He smirked before grabbing Sasuke's arm and tossing him into three of the ink lions causing them to disperse. Naruto quickly ducked another lion before punching it in the stomach causing it to disperse and then charging another lion before dispersing it with a roundhouse kick to the left side of its head. Five down, four to go. Naruto mumbled before flinging five Sinbon at them while he mule kicked Sasuke who had tried to sneak up on him. By the time Sasuke had hit the ground the four remaining ink lions had been dispersed by the Sinbon and Sai had fallen out of the tree behind the lions with the fifth Sinbon stuck in the left side of his chest. You lose Uchiha. Naruto said as he stepped on Sasuke's back to keep him from getting up. Winner Naruto. Kakashi said slightly shocked as Naruto removed his foot from Sasuke's back. While Naruto was walking away from the sparring area Sasuke stood up in a rage and flew through hand seals before screaming, Die you Dobi. Kaden. 
Gukaku no Jutsu. Sasuke unleashed a large fireball at Naruto's back. Sasuke the match is over. Kakashi yelled out while staring at the fireball heading for Naruto's back. Before Sasuke even noticed, Naruto had disappeared from his technique's line of fire and reappeared beside him. Naruto quickly smashed Sasuke in the face and sent him several feet back across the clearing. Why did you have to be so, stupid? Naruto sighed before throwing three Senban into each one of Sasuke's arms and legs. After that Naruto simply walked away from the beaten Team 7. After beating Team 7 Naruto quickly made his way to his apartment and went to his poison garden to calm down. Several hours later Naruto had cared for his garden and even made a few vials of poisons. He then decided to go have some Ichiraku ramen to end his day on a good note. When he arrived Naruto greeted Tiyuchi and Ayame with a smile and told them to keep the ramen coming. After having several bowls of ramen Naruto paid his bill and left with a wave to the two ramen chefs. When he got back to his apartment he was in a better mood and more than ready to head to bed. After finishing his shower Naruto put his pajamas on before spinning into bed with a content smile on his face. Several hours earlier with Anko after Anko had separated from Naruto for the day she went to meet up with her friends at their favorite bar. When she entered the bar she quickly spotted Kurenai, Hana, and Yugao in their usual booth waiting for her. Hey girls, how's everything been going with you? Anko asked as she sat down with them. Kurenai was the first to respond, training with my team has been going well. I'm planning on requesting a C rank mission tomorrow. She said while sipping her drink. Work at the vet has been going well. No serious injuries or diseases have come in. So my works has been rather easy. Hannah replied with a sigh as she stirred her drink. I've been training a lot with my squad. Other than that I've been doing the normal patrols. Yugao said as she finished off her sake with a content sigh. So what have you been up to Anko? Kurenai asked. Yeah how has that cutie Naruto been? Hana questioned with a raised eyebrow. Naruto. Oh, you mean the genin with the rare bloodline, right? Yugao asked as she refilled her GL. Yeah, that's him Yugao. He's been fine Hana. We just returned from AC rank turned B rank mission. Anko answered with a smile. The brat actually handled the mission perfectly. He took out an entire camp of bandits without making a sound. He even did it with one jutsu. She boasted with a smile. Seriously, all three Kunoichi questioned incredulously. Yep and when 20 more came out being led by a missing nin from Kusa he actually asked me to step back. Enko said with a laugh at her friend's shocked faces. Why would he ask you to step back, questioned Hana. Well the Kusa pig and his bandit followers made remarks about using me to please them and that seemed to piss the brat off. Next thing I know I'm watching him dispatch 15 bandits with a poisoned sweetened jutsu while taking out the last 5 with taijutsu and a bloodline technique. Enko explained with a slight smile and blush adorning her face. Seems like he respects women quite a bit. Remarked Kurenai with an approving nod. Oh believe me he does. Enko responded with a smirk. How did he deal with the missing nin? Yugao asked curiously. Believe it or not he not only beat the whole, he also beat 20 Suchi Bunshins before finishing them all off with a Haijutsu he created. I'm telling you girls, that Jutsu covered that entire camp in so many poisons I don't think an entire team of medic nin could identify them all. Anko gushed slightly while smiling fondly at the memory. Does, snake mistress, Anko have a crush on her genin apprentice? Hannah questioned with a teasing tone. No. Anko shouted with a blush. Well, maybe a little. I kind of saw his, morning problem, when we shared a tent on the way back to the village. She explained as she got a faraway look on her face. Oh really? Well how well, endowed, is the boy? Yugao asked with a raised eyebrow. Um, about six inches long and two inches thick. Anko replied in a small voice. He was also hard as a rock. She mumbled out. Honestly Anko, you sound like you touched it. Kurenai exclaimed shocked. I kind of did. Anko replied in the same small voice. I practically gave him a hand job while he was asleep before I regained control of myself. She mumbled out as she downed her entire bottle of sake. Jeez Anko. 
you're lucky he stayed asleep. Kurinai admonished as she too downed the rest of her drink. Well you won't have to wait long Enko-chan. Hannah stated, once he turns 13 and becomes a Chunin he'll need a woman to carry his child so he can claim clan head status. Maybe if you two work out a relationship, you'll be the one who gets to be the lucky woman. She finished with a smirk. That's true enough Anko. I say you should give it a swow. Where else are you going to find a man as sweet as this Naruto sounds? Yugao asked as she smiled at Anko. While I would normally be against this, it does sound like you two would get along well. That might even become love if you let it happen. Kurinai said as she too gave her support. I just hope you'll be willing to share him. Hannah stated with a grin. I wouldn't mind being with a guy that'll actually care about me. Plus I know he's strong and that means we'd have strong pups together. The dog-like girl finished with a blush of her own. I might consider letting you share him with me Hannah chan Anko said with a devious smile. But I get him first. Including his first, first date, first blowjob, and his first child. She finished with a glazed expression and a little blood running down from her nose. I'd take that deal. Hannah giggled out while Kurinai and Yuga looked back and forth between them with wide eyes. Well it's getting late and I gotta torture the brat some more tomorrow and see if we can't get another C-rank mission. Anko stated as she left the bar and headed home for a good night's sleep. I think I'll tease Naruto-kun a bit tomorrow. She thought with a grin as she sped into bed and fell asleep to dreams of her with a child of her own that had very familiar blue eyes. This is the end of the part 1. I hope y'all loved it. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Be sure to thank and support Kairamaru. See you in the next video quietly here. Love you all.